Hey, it's your main man, Sabado. I uh, thought I would come on today uh, unscripted and just talk to you a little bit about something that has been on my mind a little bit uh, as I've talked to people about early retirement, um, as I've heard some of the pushback that, that people have, and really try to provide a little bit of perspective about my views on, on early retirement and retirement as a whole, because I think that at some point we're all going to find ourselves at, a, at on that road and at a crucial point, we're going to have to make a, a, a decision. Uh, but before I do that, I just, again, want to take an opportunity to welcome you or welcome you back to my channel. Uh, I'm Sabado, and this is a, tire, uh, a channel where we talk about retirement. We talk about um, all things retirement. Um, we talk a little bit about some of the financial components of retirement. And I want to tell you right away, just out of the gate, that I'm not a financial advisor and I've never played one on TV. In fact, I use a financial advisor. So I share with you a lot of times the information that I got from my financial advisor. Um, talk a little bit about what's going on just in the rest of the world. And in other cases, just uh, taking a look at different uh, uh, perspective on, on the idea of, of early retirement. You know, it's it's interesting. Um, I, I did a search on YouTube the other day, and I, I'm on YouTube all the time, and I, I took up, I just looked up uh, the different channels that talk about early retirement. And, you know, when you talk in our society about underrepresented groups, um, you know, there's underrepresentation that that spans in, in all areas of our society, including uh, people that have experienced the opportunity to retire early. And so uh, and I think part of that reason is because for a lot of us, we didn't have somebody that retired in our families or we didn't have somebody who at an early age helped us understand uh, the value of money and retiring and those uh, different factors. So. My goal here is really just to have some of those conversations with you. And I, I get it. Most of you are adults. Some of you are older than me. I'm uh, 52. Um, but I, I think that it still comes down to having access to the information. And sometimes it's not about having all the information, but it's about um, knowing where to look for it or even knowing that, the, that it exists. You know, I, I was once told by a guy that I worked with, he drew me a big circle and he made a, a small piece of the pie. And then he says, you know, here's, and he gave me a dot and then he put a dot in there and he says, this dot represents what you know. He says that small piece of the pie is what you don't know. And he said, the rest of this big old circle is what you don't know you don't know. And so what I'm trying to do is help uh, bridge that gap of what you don't know you don't know so you can start asking the questions and perhaps see that retirement might be something that even if you're not able to retire early is something that you may be able to do uh, before the age of 70. So uh, so today I'd like to talk a little bit about um, just the the idea of, of retirement and I've got. I've talked to a lot of people who have told me I'm not going to retire until I'm 70, or I'm going to work for the rest of my life, and and some of those types of comments. And and I and I think to myself, you know, I don't I don't think people really grasp the idea that there's going to be a time when they're not able to work. And so, uh, you know, what I'd like to talk a little bit about is is how we find that sweet spot, and that sweet spot sits between early retirement where I think there's some people that retire way too soon. Uh, there are people that retire in their 30s. There's people that retire in their 40s. And don't get me wrong, if a person is financially able to do that, then I think by all means, taking your time back and understanding the value of your time and the big scheme of things and, and maximizing that time to do the things that you want to do, I think that's great. Um, but I think there's, I, I think what's happened in our social media generations is that we've assigned things to things or we've, we've assigned, and I, I know that sounds strange, but a person can't just retire early. They have to be part of the fire movement. And so I don't know that I subscribe necessarily to the fire movement, which is financial independence, retire early because in the fire movement, people will spend 
all of their money and all of their resources towards saving, which is good and bad because there's, um, if you, if you put all your money into, into saving, then you don't experience life. And then when you get older, you try to make up for that lost time, or there's a host of experiences that you don't have, or you become what I call a, a smart idiot, somebody who's really intelligent, but just doesn't have the life experience that's commensurate to their age uh, because they weren't able to have those experiences because they live so thin. So I'm not a big fan of the FIRE movement. Um, I think it's great for people to retire early, but I think as soon as you put a label on something, then the goal becomes retirement. And I'm here to tell you that uh, life and retirement is not a, is not a uh, destination. It's really about the journey. Uh, it's just a different part of your journey. When you're, when you're working, that's a part of your journey. You're providing value to a company or an organization and using that, they're using that to push their mission forward. And we hope that we have jobs that help us feel good about ourselves and who we are and our contributions to the world. Uh, then you get to a point where you retire. And it's not that the journey ends and you just sit on the couch all day and do nothing because then you go crazy. But it's just a different part of the journey where now you're in a situation where you can do anything you want to do or nothing at all. Um, I had a conversation with somebody one day and they told me, you know, I'm never going to retire and I love my job and all these, you know, the, the standard conversation. And I said, well, what would you do if you won the lottery? And they said, well, if I won the lottery, I'd get a job that was less stressful. So I said, well, why don't you do that now? If, if the goal of your life is to live a life with less stress and having a different job is going to do that, there's nothing stopping you from doing that now. And it's, it's easy for us to get caught into the idea that we need to make the money that we're making. But we only have to do that if we're living outside of our means, if we have debts, if we have a lot of times, if we have young children, it's not possible for us to do that. But however you live that journey, when you get to the point where you're doing what it is you want to do, then you could call that retirement. I have, a, I have a friend of mine who used to play professional baseball, good friend of mine, and he has a couple of businesses. He's an entrepreneur and um, he's, his, his life is, I call him pre-retired because he's doing exactly what it is that he wants to do. Uh, he's trying to build wealth and, 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 and make sure that his, uh, uh, family down the line has has money to live and he's he's uh, he's doing the things that he wants to do but he's also keeping an eye on some of the different irons in the fire to make sure that things happen and so but I tell you what if I call him and say hey let's go get 18 on he's there or if I say hey let's go hang out and have lunch he's there because he's in control of this time how many of you at work are really in control of your time how many of you at work have to um, have performance evaluations to tell you're doing a good job, even if you know you're doing it. How many of you say after a holiday or after a weekend, oh, it's Monday, I got to get ready to go back to work. And then you ask yourself, if I didn't have to, uh, is this what I would want to do, even if I wasn't getting paid for it? You know, there are very few people, and let me know if you're different. There's very few people that are doing what they do on a, on a daily basis um, that they would do for free if they weren't getting paid for it. And if you, if you have that type of existence, great. And so I do think there's, that is another piece of the journey. And so the retirement journey, and I think that journey takes on a couple of different uh, complexions over the course of your retirement, where early in your retirement until you're in your 70s or so, you know, you may be just running and gunning. You're like the, the 1990 running rebels from UNLV. You're just running and gunning, going, going, vacations, traveling, drives, having fun, partying, visiting friends, doing all these different activities. Then you'll get to a point where it slows down a little bit because, you know, your body, you just don't move the same way you did. And I, I know there's people on YouTube, I've seen them, that have this you know, they're 70 years old and they're the strongest they've ever been and all that stuff. But the reality is that's not most of us. Um, and then you have, so you slow down a little bit in there. And then you have the point where you just can't really do much. Um, and, and, you know, folks, you don't see too many 90-year-olds. Uh, I mean, there's some. So, again, I, I can't speak for everybody. can't speak in broad brushes. 
but there's a there's a point where you just can't do some of those things um, anymore, and so you're you, that's the point where you're, where you're staying at home. And so the point being is that retirement takes on different complexions. But just like retiring too early and not having a life experience and not necessarily having an understanding of what life is going to bring going forward, I also think there's a point where you retire too late. Um, you know, a lot of folks that I talk to tend to um, look at a retirement date as an objective. And we're so uh, results driven and we're so based on a result that we say, I'm not going to retire until I'm 70. Well, who knows what's going to happen when you're 70? Are you going to have a major health issue? Is your spouse spouse going to have a major health issue? Uh, what's going to be going on with your parents? Are your parents going to have to come in and live with you? Are you are there different things that might be happening at 70? You just don't know. And so, if you wait till 70, right to the end of those of those years where you're where you're really able to go, then you have to ask yourself, what kind of retirement do I want to have? And Am I able to do the things that I want to do in retirement? So, for example, I know my wife and I, we have a list of, of uh, 10 places that we want to go. And if you want to see a video, and I, I can tell you all the places, but if you want to see a video on that, please let me know in the comments and I'll do a uh, do an episode where we talk about the place we want to go and talk about the why, because there's a whole bunch of stuff uh, that we want to do. And we did one of them last year. We did the Panama Canal. So we went to the Panama Canal. In South America. So that was pretty cool. Um, but there's there's about nine other places that we that we want to go. Um, so I could I could let you know that. But it's easier to get up, it's easier to move around when you're younger, when you have more vitality, when you have more strength, and you can move uh, a little bit easier than it is when you're in your in your mid-70s. When you're usually in your mid-70s, there's considerations. You know, you don't want to fall. You don't want to trip on something. I'm not saying that you want to trip when you're in your 20s and 30s or 40s and 50s either. But, um, you know, there's those types of things. A lot of times people, if there's any uh, outstanding health issues, those then start to become real when you're in your 60s, when you're in your 70s. Um, and so you might be on medications or there might be travel restrictions. And so it really becomes difficult for you to do perhaps to do some of the things that you want to do. Now, if you just want to sit home and watch TV all day, then more power to you. But that's not what most people want to do. Um, and, and we always talk about retire to something and, and not from something. Um, but then, you know, and there's what I call the sweet spot. And there's that sweet spot between retiring too early and feeling uncomfortable about that and retiring too late. And I think that's really going to depend on who you are and what it is that you want to get out of retirement. I, I think a question that we should all ask ourselves very early on is what is it if we if money was not an object and we could do anything that we want to do, what is it that we would do? Some of us would say we just relax. Some of us would say we read a book. You know, I play the piano or I play music on my on my turntables or I go and play golf, I hang out with my wife, I create YouTube content. Um, there's a bunch of things that I do, and there's a lot of stuff that I don't even know that I like. I'm, I'm thinking about taking a music theory and an intro piano class in the fall. Um, I'm thinking about going and becoming a master gardener through one of the universities out here so I could really take my gardening to the next level. So when you go to my Instagram channel, uh, you'll it'll, it'll step it up a notch, and perhaps you'll be coming to me for advice on retirement and gardening. Just kidding, but kind of. But you know, you gotta think about the type of retirement that you wanna have. And so once you determine that type of retirement that you wanna have, then start thinking about what are some of the ages that I can do those things in. I mean, it's unrealistic to say, look, I wanna run a marathon once in my life and I'm gonna do it at 85. Are there people that do it? Sure. Do most people do it? No. Is it realistic? Probably not, unless you've been running marathons this whole time at which time that wouldn't be a bucket list item for you. And so, you know, you figure out what's the time frame I can do some of those things. What are what's the how, what are my what's my window of, of opportunity? Because the reality is is once you hit 50, you reasonably have about 30 summers left, 35 summers left, maybe 40 summers if you're lucky. 
Um, women have a longer life expectancy, I think. And again, don't quote me on this. Uh, don't quote me, boy, because I ain't said nothing. No, I'm just kidding. But women, I think, generally have a longer life expectancy. So they may have 45 summers. But once you hit the age of 50, you have a very limited amount of time going forward. And so you have to think about what is it that I would do during that time. Then I would take a look at my financial picture and say, what, how much does it cost me to live? Um, you know, I buy a bunch of stuff. I have some expensive taste, but if I, if I gave up the Versace shoes and the, and the Gucci watches and, and got myself a Timex and some Nikes, um, how much would I save and, and what kind of life can I live? Because I, I think our younger years are built with extravagance and trying to keep up with the Joneses. By the time you start thinking about retirement, you're the Joneses because the fact of the matter is, is that a fairly low percentage of people retire early. And most people, um, you know, retire when they, as they, as they get a little bit older. So, uh, but what is it, what are those years that I can do that from? And, and, and how much is it going to cost me to live that life? Is it going to cost me $200,000 a year? Is it going to cost me $100,000 a year? And then start putting together just a rough budget to, to get an idea of what, what's my, what are my costs? You know, I'll tell you a funny story. When I was a kid, I uh, sat down with my mom. I used to work at Price Club years ago. And Price Club was the offshoot of Costco, or I guess it was Price Club, and then there was Costco, then there was Price Costco, and then Costco. And so, but anyway, I, I used to work at the Price Club. And it was a great job. I was in college. Got a bunch of stories around that, and you'll hear those in, in other episodes, and I'll, I'll share some as we go forward. But I was broke. I, I went to my mom and I said, I'm broke. I, I don't have any money. I don't know what I'm going to do and, and all of this. So I, I, she sat me down at the table. She said, son, uh, let's, let's go through your finances. And so what we did is we did line by line everything that I spent money on. And believe it or not, I ended up, I had $100 more a month. Um, I had $100 more a month at the end of the month that I didn't even know I had because I had never sat down and wrote out my financial picture. Well, if you think about how much money you spend and how much money you waste in those times where if you would have just not gotten that thing that you later learned that you didn't get, then you, then you might have more money than you think you do. And so, you know, that's really something to consider because I, I'll tell you in my own situation, um, you know, I was, I was, definitely concerned about retiring because I didn't want to run out of money. And, you know, I'm just that guy. I come from that, that scarcity mentality. I, I didn't grow up with a bunch of money. You know, I was working at Price Club making six bucks an hour and thought I was going to be broke for the rest of my life. It, it's, it's just the whole thing. And I, I talk about it in some other episodes. So check those out in, in some of the videos down below. But as I started to do the finances and look at, and my wife and I putting together that budget, we realized that we were able to live on significantly less and what it was that we're making, which gave me an incredible amount of confidence going forward. And so, and, and, and with that budget, we were able to put in those things that we like to do. So we have a certain amount that we save every year for vacations. We have a certain amount for discretionary spending. So when I want to go play golf, we want to go to the movies or we want to go to the casino. Now I'm hoping to bolster the, uh, those costs when I, when I go to the uh, casino and, and make a little bit more money. I'm halfway kidding there, but it, you start to realize how little, and it, it turns out that we only needed on a monthly basis, only need about a third of what it is that we were making when we were working. And so, and had I known that I would have retired five years sooner, but I didn't. Um, and then once you figure that out, then figure out, um, you know, how long is it going to take you to get to the point where you could save enough money to where, and again, I, I highly recommend going and seeking out the help of a financial advisor because they can really help you with the budgeting, with the taxes and some of that. But look at your, your pre-tax accounts, look at any pensions that you have, look at your uh, 401ks, 457bs and all that, and then see, is there a way that I could sustain over time? I have a buddy of mine that just retired early and after a conversation just like this, he went and took a look at that um, he had, he realized he had a couple of pensions from small jobs that he had back in the day. Um, he was debt free. He's got, he's paying for his house, but he's not paying a bunch of other costs. He doesn't have a bunch of credit card debt, 
car payments and things like that that really eat up the budget. And he said, you know, with these small pensions, I could cover my house payment. Then everything else, I just take a small amount out, maybe one or two thousand dollars a month. And as the markets grow, he ends up with a little bit more cash. So he ends up at a net, almost a net zero perspective. And he retired about three or four years earlier than he had anticipated. And that's all I'm suggesting you take a look at is, is see when that is. Because once you have the, once you've defined what it is that you want to do with your life, and then you define how much it's going to cost you to live that life. Now you have the framework of a plan because once you know when that time is, then what you're focused on is you're not focusing on retiring early. You're not focusing on retiring late. You're looking at focusing in the right time. And that's that sweet spot that I was talking about is if you find that sweet spot and that may give you about a three to five year window. Um, originally for us, I didn't plan on retiring until uh, for until 2026, 2027, something around there. And as we started to look at the budget, cut things out, realize what we were spending and what we weren't spending, I was able to to do that early. Not because I uh, was something miraculous, but I realized we didn't we didn't spend that much. And 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 it's funny because as I started to think about that, I also started to put my put my job into perspective. And, you know, I, I just I just have this view of, of work now that, that I didn't have before. Um, I, I'll tell you a funny story. So I used to be a I used to be an HR executive. So I was a human resources executive. So I was the chief human resources officer for, for a major organization. Um, so I went in one time and I, I, I took a, I took a role for less money because I believed in the mission that this organization had. So I took this, I, I took the took the role for less money, got in and realized that of all of the members of the executive team, I was the lowest paid. And so that organization was taking advantage of me. And so what I did was, as, as any good HR person does, I do the comp data and I, I take a look at all the information and I look at other jobs in the community. And I went to my boss and I mentioned to him, I said, um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, I'm not being paid commiserate with the market. Uh, I know that others are. And, you know, and I would have hoped that somebody would have said, hey, look, you know, we're actually paying for this role. It actually pays a lot more. Because, again, when you look at the, the revenue for an organization, about 70 to 80 percent of that's going to be based on employee costs, pay, benefits, and retirement, and all of these types of things, which I was responsible for. So anyhow, I said to him, uh, you know, I think I should get paid more. So he says, well, you know, give me your data. So I sent him my information, and he uh, he looked at it, and he kept saying, well, you know, take a look. And my boss was the CEO. So he looked at it, and then he says, oh, I'll get back to you next week. Next week would come, wouldn't hear anything. I'll get back to you in a couple of weeks. Then he goes out of town and all of this stuff. In the meantime, I launched for another whole project. I launched for the organization a, a compensation survey a study and realized that the entire organization was being had opportunities. And so it, it's funny because the amount that I had put to him uh, when I spoke to him was about, uh, was about $60,000 a year less than what the survey data came back with. And so then at that point, his back was against the wall. And then after about six months, he told me he was going to give me this increase. A week after that, I told him I'm retiring. Because in that moment, I realized something. I realized that my value to him was only as valuable as I was able to do stuff for him and he didn't care about me as a person. I was a cog in his wheel. And so when you go back and you look at work, and my father used to always tell me that, you know, businesses are in the business of making money and nothing else. But, you know, as an HR person, as a business person, we talk about organizational culture. We talk about it being like family. Um, and then I see friends of mine that have been in organization for 20 years getting laid off because they didn't meet the revenue. So there's, there, it's, it's incongruent. And so when you think about why you're not retiring or why you're averse to retiring, how much of it is that? Um, and, and always keep in perspective that 
I'm not saying that you have to hate your company. I'm not saying you have to be cynical. I wouldn't say any of that. What I'm suggesting is that try to find what's right for you and make the decision that's right for you. And all of the people that are supposed to be happy about that, they're going to be happy about it. But don't wait and get past that sweet spot because you think you're too valuable to the organization or because you think they're not going to be able to live without you or because you love your job or any of those types of things. Again, if you love your job, would you do it for free? If the answer is no, then how much do you really love your job? Are you just telling us that so that way you could make yourself feel better about what it is that you're doing? But again, the, the moral of the story here is try to avoid retiring too early because I think when you retire too early, you may cash it in um, too early and you don't, you're not able to experience some of the things you need to experience to fully appreciate your retirement. Now, are there people that do it? 100%. I have some, there's some folks on YouTube that have retired in their, in their late 30s, early 40s, and they're doing phenomenal. So again, by no means am I broad brushing and talking about everybody, but I'm just saying in general, uh, if I knew then what I knew now, I'm happier retiring now than I would have been uh, back then. But then don't allow yourself to retire too late because if you retire too late, you're really pushing up against that back window of when um, you can do the things that you want to do. And you may not know that there's things you want to do right now, but I guarantee you that as you start getting towards your time, you start to think about all the things that you want to do. For me, I just like waking up on a Monday and not having to get up early unless we have the people coming to clean the house. I like the fact that um, the 4th of July comes and it's during a week. I don't have to worry about being at work the next day. I can stay up as late as I want to the night before. Uh, I like the fact that I could go on vacations and if I want to extend it, I can go ahead and extend it as long as somebody keeps an eye on the cat for us. So, you know, those are things, that, that type of freedom, and I think we all like that type of freedom. But, you know, if you figure out um, what you want and you don't want to allow yourself to wait and retire too late. Because then you, a lot of those things you want to do, um, you just can't do it. And I don't know if I've told the story about my father, but I, my mom and my dad, they wanted to, uh, their goal was to retire and do a whole bunch of traveling. And then my dad, he had a stroke and it changed everything. And so you don't want to wait. And my mom had already retired waiting for him, but he wanted to wait a few more years. And so don't wait a few more years. You never know. Um, what you're going to have and, and what's going to be in front of you. And I'm not saying that you put yourself in the, in the, in the prime seat, in the, in the front row seat of the struggle bus, but I do think you should take a look at, uh, make sure that if you're continuing to work, it's of absolute necessity because the, the fact of the matter is, is the only reason your job has uh, you on their payroll is because you're an absolute necessity for them. And then if you leave, they'll do what they've done for the last 50 years, hire somebody else in that role and go on about their business. But at the end of the day, it's your mental health, it's your physical health, it's your well-being that you have to keep in mind. So on that note, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and let you go. But again, this is something that I was thinking of. I wanted to share with you. Um, you know, don't allow yourself, don't, try not to retire. Don't get so focused on the fire movement that you retire too early at the, at the sake of your own well-being. Uh, and don't wait too long. Uh, wait, just allow yourself to... Um, you know, when you have the opportunity, find that sweet spot, figure out what it is that you want to do, figure out what it's going to cost you and, and then put the plan together. And I guarantee you, I absolutely guarantee you that um, you'll, you'll, you'll be glad that you did. And if there's retired people on this, on the, on the channel that are, that are listening to this, you know, give us some comments because it's, you know, we all owe it to pay it forward to those people that are in the shoes that we were once in to possibly help motivate and inspire them to do something that they really want to do, but really needed the, the extra push to do it. So again, this is As, uh, your main man, As Sabado. If you, if you like this channel and you like the information that I share, and again, I post uh, a couple times a week and I, I try to put shorts out for, for short bursts of inspiration. Uh, but again, it's real people or a real person talking about real things. Um, or if there's something that you, that you have that you'd like to have discussed on the channel, uh, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and uh, feel free to leave a comment with anything that you think would be uh, helpful to others, um, either that you experienced during your retirement journey or that you think others might benefit from. So anyhow, on that note, have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.